Hello learners, I welcome you all in yet another video lesson of NIOS DLED program course code 509 unit 8 on teaching of social sciences and the title of unit 8 is learning resources in social sciences. Today we are going to talk about development and management of learning resources in social sciences. But before moving on to the lesson, I just want to share with you the proposed flow of the lesson. First of all, I would share with you the lesson guide, then the expectations in terms of learning objectives, then we will discuss upon learning resources, concept, need, importance and types, then we will discuss about essential of development of learning resources, then we will move on essential of management of learning resources, then at the end we are having recapitulation and the take home task. Before moving on the lesson, let me share with you the lesson guide. During the presentation, I will explain and exemplify the different concept. You should follow my voice and the slides as well. You will find important words and sentences etc. have been highlighted to facilitate retention. I have also summarized the main points at the end to have a quick glance for better retention. Then there are some questions and exercises in between and at the end of my presentation, you are advised to attempt these questions or exercises after going through the video lesson. Now to ponder upon what makes learning effective, is it teacher's authority, is it total student's control or is it students meaningful engagement? What would be your answer? I think you would answer that students meaningful engagement are essential to make learning more effective. Now we know that learning resources are the mechanisms through which we can ensure learning engagement. Therefore learning resources becomes important to make teaching effective. As far as the learning resources are concerned, learning resources can be described or defined as anything a person, a material, situation, experiences, whatever it is, which facilitate students learning. Anything which facilitates students learning is called a learning resource. Then learning resources are used during instruction to maximize learning. The objective of learning resource is obviously the maximization of learning. Learning resource ensure active involvement. Learning resource also ensure the participation of the learners into the learning process. Learning resources also helps in bridging the gap between new and the prior knowledge. Then the question comes why we use the learning resources in the classroom. Learning resources makes teaching and learning effective as we have already discussed that learning resources facilitate the effective learning by engaging teacher and student meaningfully. Learning resources also help the learner to achieve the learning objectives more effectively and efficiently. Use of learning resource would be less demanding in terms of learning time is considered and also it reaches the student more effectively than the lecture methods thereby the learner achieves learning objectives effectively and efficiently. Learning resources help in clarifying, interpreting and appreciating the concepts. Learning resources also provide clarity, precision and accuracy in processing of information and learning resources also help student learning faster, remember longer, gain more accurate information as they exemplify or represent the information or the knowledge in a manner which is more receptive by the students which makes them more engaging into the learning process. Learning resources are also used for learners readiness. Learning resources help retention of the learned concept for a longer time. Learning resources are capable of providing real or direct or almost 
near to real experiences to the learners, we can bring the context or the real life into the classroom through the use of learning resources. For example, if we are required to show or to use a dissection or a particular kind of plant to our student which is uh, which which grows in a particular habitation we cannot take them towards that habitation or to that place where that plant grows we can bring the picture or the video of that plant and the ambience in and digital form to the classroom so learning resources brings the direct or almost real experiences to the classroom Learning resources also provide learners opportunity to learn individually in small groups and in large groups as well. Now what are the different kind of learning resources? We are having different categorization of learning resources on different criteria. So when we talk about availability and location, we are having four categories of learning resources. Learning resources which are available in the classrooms learning resources which are available in the school and in the library, learning resources which are available in the school except the library and learning resources which are available in the community. On the basis of print and non-print nature, we are having two categories of learning resources. Learning resources which are in print format, generally visual resources they are also called and non-print format, generally digital resources they are also called. On the basis of dimension, we are having three categories of learning resources. First are unidimensional, then we are having two dimensional and then we are having three dimensional learning resources. Now the different kind of learning resources which we popularly use in social sciences are Relia and Diorama, Maps and Globes, Models, Graphs, Charts and Cartoons, Timelines, Books newspaper clippings, museums, movies, internet, school and community. This list is not exhaustive but yes it is prominently used keeping in mind the content of social sciences in the elementary level. Now when we talk about the development of learning resources, why it is important that needs to be answered. Why development is an issue? Development of learning resources. Because resources are available, we can use the learning resources. But what are the issues involved when we talk of using learning resources effectively in the classroom that also pertains to the development of learning resources? There is a trade-off between the effect and benefit and cost or the allocated financial resources. We are not having abundance of resources with us to be utilized on the production of or the development of learning resources. So we need to choose what kind of learning resource we should have in our classroom and we need to choose or look at the restraint or the constraint made by the financial resources which are available for the development. As schools does not have budget to be spent on learning resources, therefore development is a major issue. Then development is also an issue because we need to ensure the maximization of benefit through the learning resources. That is, we need to ensure the usability and relevance. As we are having limited funds, we are having limited financial resources, we need to ensure that our funds should be utilized in proper manner so that we would be able to develop or procure a learning resource which can be utilized and which is relevant to the content or to the things which we are going to teach in the classroom. Then learning resource or development of learning resource is also an issue because we need to choose the most appropriate or adapt the existing resource to make them relevant. Because we are having different kind of learning resources which are relevant for different kind of things we are going to handle in the class. So we need to choose which one is the most appropriate or which one would maximize the learning outcomes and accordingly we need to adapt the old which are there or which are existing with us to make them relevant or to make them usable for that particular class. So while developing learning resources we need to keep in mind their usability and also their relevance and we are also restricted by the constraint of limited funds available with us. Then what are required to uh, be kept in mind when we are developing learning resource? It is termed as the essential of developments of learning resource. 
Then when we talk about the essential of learning resource, we need to use charts, diagrams, etc. Available in the textbooks, we are having textbooks as a rich learning resource with us which are having different kind of sub learning resources procured or uh, located within the textbooks. So we can use the charts and diagrams which are available in the textbooks and review books with and without modification. We can take them as it is or we can modify them as per our need. They can be enlarged through handmade imitations or through e electronic enlargements. If you are good in a drawing or imitation, you can draw that particular chart, diagram or picture which is there in the textbook by on your own. Otherwise, you can take the help of the student for its enlargement through hand if you are uh, going to do. Otherwise, you can have or you can procure a digital scanned copy and then enlarge prints of digitally scanned copy from the textbooks of that particular picture, chart or diagram. Then the learning resource in the form of pictures which are available in old magazines or newspaper can also be used by preparing its collage for the purpose of teaching in social sciences or delivering a concept in the social sciences. Then we can also explore resources from the community. We can invite learned people for narrating oral history. We are having different kind of people which are situated in our vicinity, which are available in the vicinity. We can invite them to talk with our students and they can share their experiences with the students and as people, as person, they could function as a learning resource to facilitate the learning of social science in the classroom. We can also record the conversation or the discussion made by them and make, we can reuse them when they are not available to talk with our students after in the future times. Then when we talk about the essential of learning resources, consultation with the institution of education and training colleges which are generally called B.Ed or D.L.Ed colleges, they are having abundance of learning resources as the past of their course curriculum as student teacher develop many learning resources for delivering their lesson and those teaching aids get submitted into their college or institution. If we, we are a school teacher, when get in contact with those institution, we can fetch many kind of or variety of learning resources from them otherwise they are going to be waste in their store. Then we are also having internet facilities which is available if available in the school that can also fetch a variety of learning resources in the form of information, charts, picture, graph. These days we are having different kind of MOOCs, courses, plethora of information is available on internet. So we can use internet if available in the school as a potential learning resource to facilitate the learning of social sciences. Then we are having open educational resources. I was talking about MOOC. MOOC is a uh, component of or part of under open educational resources which are free from copyright or having limited copyright, different kind of copyrights are there with open educational resources. They could be used and reused and reproduced. Open educational resources can also be accessed on internet to develop learning resources and to enrich the learning of our students in social sciences. As far as the procurement of material is concerned to develop the learning resources or in terms of learning resources that may be available free of cost or at nominal cost from government agencies. So we need to contact or we can contact government agencies where the material is available or learning resources are available in the form of brochures, in the form of posters, calendars, old reports. So we can contact them and we can get them, procure them. Either these are available free of cost or at nominal cost. So government agency can also be a source of procuring learning resources to facilitate the learning of social science in our classroom. Then parent and teacher can join hands together in parent teacher association to pool and generate resources to develop and uh, or arrange learning resources. So parent and teacher could, could work together to develop different kind of learning resources and even to generate financial resources for procurement of the learning resources. Then it is also essential when we talk about the development of learning resources that a teacher should be a foresighted one and keeps on doing the continuous effort 
as these are required to develop pool of learning resources such as start a collection of clipping from daily newspaper, old can calendars, etc. and preserve them according to their nature and future potential. If we try to procure or arrange a learning resource at the time when it is required, it is always become difficult and also can co cost more to us when the learning resource is required immediately to be used in the classroom. So, the foresightedness and continuous efforts refers to that we can uh, estimate the learning needs or the need for learning resources which can be utilized in the future in the classroom and try to bring them out as and when we are getting encountered with those kind of learning resources or the potential resources which could be used as learning resources in our classroom and store them and preserve them according to their nature and future usage. Maps can also be enlarged with the help of slice projector on a white close. We are having maps on the uh, on, on paper, uh, printed on a paper which are not you know very enlarged or big one which could be used in a huge classroom where the strength is 40 or 40 plus. So, what we can use to have a low, low cost of enlargement, we can enlarge or impose that particular map on a white cloth on our own by tracing it or using the blue ink. It is very easy. Now, as far as the essential of development of learning resources are concerned, student can also contribute in development of learning resources doing different projects and assignments. We can give different kind of projects and assignment to the student and as an outcome of those projects and assignments, the student can bring out or can develop different kind of learning resources. For example, we can give them to prepare charts, we can give them uh, assignment to prepare model, to uh, prepare functional model which could be used consistently and consequently to teach different kind of concepts in the classroom. So, student could also be a potential contributor to the development of learning resources. We need to locate and identify who could be a potential contributor into a learning resources, whether they are community, whether they are parents, teachers, himself or herself teachers organization, parent teacher organization, schools, government agencies, private colleges, colleges, otherwise from where we can locate different kind of resources, we can bring them in the class and we can use them. Our only purpose is to collect and procure different kind of resources which could potentially be used in the class to facilitate and maximize the learning. We can also use waste material like cardboard, thermocol sheet, mud, plaster of Paris for making models and dioramas. I have seen a video in which a people from a tribal community are making bricks from the uh, mud which are there in a pond by uh, giving them in the stencil and then uh, to uh, cook them on the fire. And from there, I got an idea to use this potential technique to develop different kind of learning resources for my social science classroom. As a teacher, you can also borrow from share material resources in cluster resource center or cluster schools. In different districts, we are having cluster resource centers or cluster schools, which are the cluster of different schools and where the resource rooms have been managed and kept. So, we can also borrow or share material from those cluster resource centers and cluster schools. Then, we can also list the students from higher class, teacher, parents and other adults in the community who can be used as resource in our uh, classes. Alumni or alumnus are also function as a potential learning school uh, resource in our classes. Then we are having the local traditional media such as dance, music, painting, drama or any other art form uh, to be used as a learning resource. The only thing which is required is to identify that traditional media that can be used as a potential learning resource in the classroom. Now, there are some examples of different categories of learning resources which I have just discussed with you. This is the local resources in which a traditional dance form is exemplified of that particular area. Then 
there is a local resource in terms of drama. Then we are having charts which we have just discussed as learning resources. This is tabular chart, this is flow chart, this is bar graph, line graph, stacked area graph which shows different line graphs at one plane. Then we are having Venn diagram and this is a 3D model globe map two dimensional learning resource. This is a working model of solar eclipse which is a three dimensional again working model. Then it is a cartoon on immigration and this is the cartoon for sensitization of individual differences in the students. Now when we talk about the management of learning resources which is the second part of this lesson, it needs to be discussed that why management of learning resources are needed. Management is to be done to facilitate smooth access of learning resource. Imagine a situation in which our learning resources are scattered here and there or kept here and there. What kind of at memory level what kind of effort we need to put in to locate where a particular learning resource is located or to remember where a particular learning resource is located and it would consume more of our time. Therefore, to facilitate smooth access to learning resource management of learning resource is very important. Then to maintain continuity in the use of learning resource the management of learning resource is also important. Then to avoid chaos in the classroom and to save time as I have discussed uh, learning resource management is required. Then the demand for just in time learning resource and services the management of learning resource is required. If you need it immediately you need to think about or you need to know that where it is uh, located or where it is positioned when uh, you are if, if you have managed the learning resource. Then the management is also required to repair and replace at the right time. If you are not managing a learning resource you are not knowing that it is going to be outdated or torn and the time to repair or replacement has come. So for the uh, timely repair and replacement of learning resource so that the learning resource would become or would be there in a functioning condition uh, the management of learning resource is required. Now what are the do's and don'ts of management of learning resource? Resources to be kept in resource center. You need not to keep resources here and there. There should be a proper resource center in your classroom or in your uh, anywhere in the school or you can keep an Almira or at least you can devote a small space for the learning resource where the learning resource should be stored. Then wide variety of learning resources requires proper indexing, cataloging and placing in systematic order because we need to locate them at the right time. So these require the proper indexing, cataloging, placing and systematic order. Then it is essential to fix the responsibility for managing the learning resource. It will save the learning resource from the damage also. So who will take care that needs to be answered where the teacher concerned who is using the learning resource or who will use the learning resource or there should be a separate professional who would take care of the learning resource. In school setup the uh, keeping of uh, a particular professional to take care of the learning resource is difficult keeping in mind the constraint of the financial resources we are having in the school. Therefore the responsibility to take care or to manage the learning resource should be uh, should be with the teacher only and the teacher can also involve the student into it. Bel the involvement of the student will help in growing a sense of belongingness among them and the minimize uh, minimization of the damage on their part. Now the users both the teachers and the student may take a better care of the resources as they are aware of what is required to increase the longevity of the resource depending on the nature of the resource. Each learning resource needs specific managerial skills, maps, books, 
newspaper clippings are better used when they are arranged and placed in proper sequence. So, students may also be involved in management of learning resources. Different students can be made in charge of different materials. To sum up in today's lesson, we have discussed in order to sustain the interest of students in social science and to promote abilities of creative thinking, problem solving and logical reasoning, use of learning resource in the social science classroom becomes essential. Resources are available within the classroom, within the school and also within the community. They can be classified on the basis of print and non-print material. Discussions have also been made on essential of development of learning resources. For effective use of learning resources, proper management of learning resource are required. Discussions have also been made on management of learning resources and generation of own learning resources in case if the available resources are not adequate and appropriate. Now it's time to take home task. You are required to enlist what needs to be considered while developing and managing learning resources to ensure effective learning. So you are expected to do this task or perform this task after this video lesson for enhancing or facilitating the learning on development and management of learning resource. We will meet in the next lesson. Bye then. Thank you.